Thank you very much, uh, Roda, for joining this virtual space uh, provided by the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, in which you and I would now talk a bit about the European African relationship, um, especially against the backdrop of the upcoming um, summit between the European Union and the African Union, which will take place on February 17th and 18th in Brussels. Uh, Roda Boateng, you are a program officer at the African Regional Organization of the International Trade Union Confederation, ITUC Africa, and therefore I think an ideal candidate to give us a critical view about what can be expected um, regarding the summit. And this is what I would like to start with. Um, the summit has been postponed twice. The president of the Commission von der Leyen said the summit uh, should take the relationship between Africa and Europe to the next level. But what can be actually expected from the summit? What, what is your feeling? Right. Thanks a lot for having me, Leonard. I'm very happy to um, have this um, roundtable or this conversation um, ahead of the AU-EU summit um, that's been postponed twice. We are happy to hear that it's finally coming off. We want to see governments, heads of states really put their money where their mouth is, you know. We want to go beyond just re resolutions. We want to go beyond um, action plans, action points. We want to go beyond declarations. We want real action so that the decisions that come up translate to real actions where we can really measure outcomes. And so we need indicators with which we can also measure outcomes so that we do not just have and beautiful plans as we are good at setting or developing, but really be able to see concrete results um, from these deliberations. And coming out, I mean, for for this for the coming um, for the forthcoming summit, we think that there are certain key areas that need to be prioritized. Coming out of the pandemic, issues around health, vaccines for all should be prioritized around the continent and also looking at um, the, the questions around migration over the past um, two, three years, we think that these need to be emphasized. Questions and th there has to be strong points on how to address the migration questions and that we do have some proposals on how to do this. I mean, um, linked to providing opportunities um, within countries to, for, 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 for youth. Unemployment opportunities is very key to, um, to prevent um, the influx of migration as we see it in recent years. Um, we also think that the, the questions around um, trade should also be prioritized um, with the ACFTA, with the advent of the ACFTA now, we think that it's important also for um, the EU to also see how we would be able to do this in a way that would um, be to the benefits of both um, blocks. If you look at most African countries, the GDP ratio to debt, I mean, the debt to GDP ratio is very high. Um, and, um, and with the onset of the pandemic, this has even become even more severe. And so there is also the push and really think that it's important for us to look at how we can um, advance debt cancellation for countries to have huge debt to be able to meet some of their domestic needs um, in, in, instead of um, you know, these huge debts that um, they, they have, the pressure of these huge debts that they need to meet. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think it's really now, as you said, the time to move by on declarations and lip services. We have seen enough strategic documents, but now, I mean, even the EU itself says, now we want to have concrete deliverables this time. Um, but we are, of course, excited to see what's really behind them. Um, what is for sure that one key topic of cooperation will be uh, energy, the uh, just energy transition, also maybe an operationalization of the European Green Deal. Um, you yourself have been attending the COP26 summit in Glasgow. What would you say is the role of climate uh, Joint find a, a joint fight against climate change in these African European relations. Right. Um, thanks for raising that because this is really key, and yes, it's also high on the agenda um, at the summit, um, and also following Glasgow. I think that it's um, this is a forum that has to really take or address some of the issues coming out of Glasgow, and specifically from the Glasgow Climate Pact that was adopted by heads of states um, during the COP26. And indeed, um, um, EU has actually made a lot of progress when it comes to their commitments to climate, but there is still a lot to be done. Looking at reports that have emerged 
um, in 2020, 2021, we see that indeed there is still a lot that has to be done if we really want to address climate, but to also address climate in a way that would not leave anyone behind. And this is why trade unions continue to push for a just transition agenda. And um, we think that it's um, this summit really has to take forward the decisions or some of the, the decisions, build on the decisions that came out of, um, of, of Glasgow, but specifically also um, looking at them um, uh, um, um, as, as, as the EU looks at operationalizing the, the Green New Deal, we see a lot of opportunities or collaborations that could also unfold between the two continents. And um, 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 an example would be um, support to transform energy sectors of most countries. Coming out of Glasgow, we saw um, the emergence of um, some financial commitments and support to countries such as South Africa, and um, the commitments of 8.5 billion from um, a number of countries from Europe um, to help transform the energy sector in um, South Africa. And, um, whilst this is laudable, we think that it's also important for countries to also um, not only commit, but then really, as I said in the beginning, um, to, to fulfill commitments. And if you go back to past commitments, um, we haven't done, I, um, industrialized countries haven't done really well with um, fulfilling and meeting commitments that they've made in the past to support the adaptation needs of um of, of, of countries in the South. And we really want to emphasize the importance for this to be highlighted and for countries to really um, um, you know, go back to supporting or really fulfilling these commitments, specifically when it comes to um, supports for adaptation in developing countries. And we also think that there's a lot of benefits or opportunities when it comes to um, the operationalization and implementation of the Green New Deal with Africa, we want to see there's a competitive advantage actually for production to be developed and to be to be brought to Africa. If we really want to see a reduction in emissions, looking at um, proximity, but um, specifically between the two continents, um, there is also a lot of advantages and a lot of um, 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 affinity. And so, if you take colonial ties, if you take even cultural similarities. Um, if you take language, for instance, and I think it's important that we look at how to develop um, these um, corporations um, when it comes to trade and support of helping Africa to be able to be a place for, um, um, I mean, if we want to move global supply chains to Africa, it's important for us to, um, for, for, for the European Union to support Africa to, be, to become a market, a deeper market for this. Thank you for that. I, I think here in Europe, we sometimes uh, forget that Africa is actually our direct neighboring continent. And if that could be taken more into account, it would be, um, I assume, beneficial for both uh, continents. Um, I would like to ask you last questions, which is also connected to what you have now already been saying. Um, I know that you, the European Union wants to form an investment package uh, at the summit uh, and will continue to focus on foreign direct investments in order to create jobs. You coming now from a labor perspective, what is your take on the, the strong focus of uh, foreign direct investment, which we can see from the side of the European Union, but also from um, several heads of states in Africa? Right. It's interesting um, that, um, yeah, it's good to see that there's, there's, the, there's a push or there's also on the agenda questions on um, generating foreign direct in investments um, for um, African countries, which is actually a, 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 a huge focus for most governments. Um, but indeed, um, from the labor perspective and from an from our assessment, um, the, the, there's still the questions whether foreign direct investments really, I mean, we have seen the push for foreign direct investments and um, in fact, um, a huge influx of foreign um, FDIs in, in a lot of African countries. But the question is whether these really translate to jobs. And indeed, we are not um, really seeing this very much. Whilst there is um, a lot of investments coming in into the continent, we think this is also actually um, contributing to the high, um, to the high um, debt ratio that we are we're actually seeing in Africa. Because the new trends of investments or the new trends of debts that we are seeing now 
are actually linked very much to investments and to loans that um, is coming from different parts, whether it's Asia, whether it's Europe, whether it's um, it's, it's the Americas. Um, and these loans actually are contributing more to um, um, deeper problems than actually um, addressing the questions of um, economic um, and, and relief to most of these countries. And so for me and for, uh, for, for, for the labor movements, what we see is actually the need for us to really develop, see how we can develop our domestic markets. Foreign, I mean, investment is good, but we think that focus should be very much on developing our domestic markets to be able to meet the needs for the people. And primary and um, most important um, among the needs is job creation. Um, um, before the pandemic, Africa had um, a huge or high growth rate. Um, most countries recording over 7% um, um, rates in GDP. Um, with, the, in, what, with the onset of the pandemic, we've seen a, a high reduction in these good rates where countries have reduced, I mean, um, an average of 3% reduction in, across, across the continent. Um, this is actually raising and lead, leading to um, a lot of um, unintended consequences, which in fact, we have been touched on questions around governance. And if you look now across the continent, there, there, there are multiple or there are huge levels. So there's a lot of instability, political instability in various countries where there's a rise in coups in different countries in Africa, which somehow has not been linked to the economic instability that has come up from um, the pandemic. These these are some of the indirect consequences, which is actually leading to all these unrests. And so the point here is it's, it's a whilst investment is good, it's very important for countries to begin to look in what? To see how we can mobilize resources internally and try to develop our domestic markets in a way that would actually respond to the social needs of the, of the people. Thank you. We, we as Friedrich Ebert Stiftung have already or um, have also commissioned a study by Professor Robert Kappel, who is an economist, and he also looked at foreign direct investments in African countries and um, had a rather grim conclusion that said that um, the huge amount of money invested is not in a good relation to the number of jobs actually created, especially since these investments are often taking place in um, raw material near sectors and not many jobs are created. Um, one should uh, more focus on small and medium-sized African companies and do knowledge exchange and yeah, build, build domestic, uh, strong domestic economies. Yes, okay. certainly, certainly agree to that. And in fact, that's something that perhaps um, we also need to talk about if we want, to, I mean, a question on um, knowledge development technology, that's something that we hadn't touched on, but this is also something, an area where we think that... Um, um, the, the, it would also be good if we could also have, um, we need to look at how we can invest in R&D, so research and development, technology, et cetera. And again, Africa is also very ripe with a youthful demographic. Um, we have the huge demographic dividend um, with majority of the, po of a huge bulge of um, the population being below 20, 20, 24 years, 35 years. And this actually provides opportunity for, um, us to be able to really develop the technology sector. And this is also an area of collaboration that we could also look at between the two um, blocks. How can Europe also help develop the, the technology competence of Africa, but also um, invest in R&D, research and development, which could also, um, it, which is also very useful um, um, for any industry and to help to develop also um, in a way that, that is more progressive. Okay, well, thank you so much for, for being with us. We've talked about um, uh, different challenges and opportunities regarding the European-African um, relationships, uh, opportunities, especially in the energy sector for cooperation, but also about um, a competitive advantage that maybe Europe has um, about jobs, foreign direct investments. Um, I think also the, the summit will be important in order to maybe try to reduce the asymmetry that is existing between those two continents and we will both look closely if this takes place. I want to thank you very much. If you have any last um, things that you expect or wish to see at the summit, uh, you could tell them now. Otherwise, I want to say thank you very much for, for joining. Well, just as I, 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 I said, to reiterate what I said in the beginning, that it's important for us to really see um, more concrete action and that we 
we hope we hope to see um not just a declaration that is just um you know just saying or putting words to paper that yes um we commit to do this we want action we want to see europe we want to see the two blocks actually deepen their collaboration um and come up with more concrete actions on how to address um, some of these issues that are um you know um um that most that both um, continents are facing and um, most importantly also to address the huge questions around health around migration around um, vaccines for all um around trade and commerce these are some of the things that we want to see high on the agenda and we hope that we would have very concrete actions to address these issues very much we look forward to the summit and maybe speak again after after it Yes, yeah, certainly. I would love to. Thank you so much to the FES also for convening this. And um, I think it's also very useful to bring on board the voices of, um, of other stakeholders. And yes, um, I continue. I would like to see the outcome of the summit and it would be good to have a, another conversation if necessary. Thank you so much, Lena.